Problems resulting from the use of alcohol and tobacco kill far too many people every year, and tragically, many of these problems could have been prevented. One of the best ways to prevent problems of this nature is to keep alcohol and tobacco out of the hands of our children. If we can keep today's kids from starting to smoke, we'll see a tremendous reduction in the number of adults who are hooked to later in life. The same is true for alcohol. The majority of people who smoke cigarettes and drink alcohol start using these substances at a young age, typically during their teenage years. According to the Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, youth ages 12 to 17 who smoke are more than 16 times as likely to drink heavily as youth who do not smoke. Our goal is to keep alcohol and tobacco out of the hands of our kids until they are old enough to purchase these substances legally. And by legally, we mean 18 years of age for tobacco products and 21 years of age for alcohol. As store owners, managers, and clerks, you play an important role in this process. It's your job to make sure you do not sell alcohol or tobacco to minors. You have a legal and social responsibility to uphold the law. If you break the law, you could be fined, you could lose your job, you could end up in jail, and your store could lose its license to sell these products in the future. There are many steps you can take to ensure that your store upholds the law. As a start, you can make sure that your establishment prominently displays appropriate signs in its doors and windows as well as close to the checkout counter or bar that clearly state the laws about alcohol and tobacco sales. It's also a good idea to have additional information on hand to give to those customers who might need further details about the laws and the penalties. This information can be very helpful in those instances when you have to refuse a sale to an underage and often unhappy customer. What are the laws in South Carolina? It is against the law for anyone to sell any type of tobacco product to anyone under the age of 18. This includes cigarettes, cigars, pipe tobacco, snuff, chewing tobacco, and even rolling papers. Violations are punishable by a fine of up to $465 for a first offense and up to $675 for a second offense. Third or subsequent offenses are punishable by a fine of up to $880. Instead of the fine, the court may require an individual to successfully complete a merchant tobacco education program approved by the South Carolina Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services. It's also against the law for anyone to sell any type of alcohol product to anyone under the age of 21. This includes beer, wine, wine coolers, and distilled liquor. Violations are punishable by a fine of up to $465 or imprisonment for up to 30 days and suspension of the driver's license for 90 days for a first offense and six months for a second offense. Any store caught violating these laws will face closer scrutiny and possibly tougher penalties. Store owners can even face the possibility of losing their license to sell alcoholic beverages in the future. In South Carolina, law enforcement authorities are using trained teenagers to participate in undercover compliance checks of retail establishments. The kids are using their own IDs when attempting to make these underage purchases, and it's amazing how many clerks have been busted simply because they didn't check the ID. When someone comes up to the counter to purchase alcohol or tobacco, ask yourself whether the individual is at least 35 years old. If not, ask for an ID. So what do you look for in an ID? In South Carolina, there are only three types of IDs that are legal and acceptable, and all must include a current photograph. Fake IDs are everywhere these days, and some of them look pretty good. That's why you should only accept one of the following. A valid state-issued driver's license. A valid state-issued personal identification card. Again, the key here is that it's state-issued, not something that can be ordered through the mail a valid U.S. government-issued immigration ID, passport, visa, or military ID. These three types of legally acceptable ID will always have the following. The name of the issuing government agency, federal, state, county, or city. The name and signature of the person. The date of birth of the person. The physical description and photograph of the person. A valid date, not an expired ID. How do you verify a customer's age? Here in South Carolina, we've gone the extra step to help our salespeople identify potential underage purchasers. First, 
State-issued personal ID cards are clearly marked if the cardholder is underage. In addition, our state-issued driver's licenses are color-coded. When someone hands you a license with either a bright green or bright red colored border around the photograph, that's your signal that you need to take just a few extra seconds to ensure that the sale is legal. For example, anyone who is under the age of 18 when their driver's license was issued will have a bright green colored border around their photograph. Anyone who is over the age of 18 but under the age of 21 at the time the license was issued will have a bright red color-coded border around the photograph. So if you see a green or red border, just stop for a moment and do the math. Many stores have calendars or other types of signs posted at the register that show today's date as the date of birth required for someone to purchase these products. If your store has one, use it to help you ensure that the sale is legal. If your store doesn't have one, just take a moment to do the math. If the numbers don't add up, refuse the sale. Another helpful tool that businesses can use to help cashiers with the process of checking IDs is age verification equipment. There are several different types of equipment that can be purchased, but most of them are terminals that can read the information stored on the magnetic strip of driver's licenses and state ID cards. The ID is swiped and the machine calculates the owner's age, displaying the information on a clear and easy to read LCD screen. While this type of equipment is an important tool to have in place, employees should not become dependent on their machine to do their job. It is still your responsibility to check the ID, verifying that it is valid and it matches the person purchasing the product. If not, then refuse the sale. Let's take a look at the flag system for checking IDs. F, feel. Have the person remove the ID from their wallet or holder. Feel the ID's texture for any raised areas that might indicate alteration. Check the lamination for any signs of tampering. Is it bubbling or peeling? L, look. Look closely at the ID to make sure it's real. Look for the South Carolina state seal. Make sure the photo matches the person who is making the purchase. Look to see whether the birth date has been altered in any way. Look at the expiration date. If the ID has expired, it is not acceptable. A. Ask. What's your middle name? Ask questions of the person, such as their middle name or the month they were born. Ask the person to sign their name and then compare the signatures. G. Give back. Always return the ID. If you have any doubt about the ID, ask for a second one. If the customer doesn't have another ID, refuse the sale. And if you ask for a customer's ID and they don't have it with them, you need to do the same thing. Refuse the sale. Let's take a look at the following scenarios and see if you can identify the points where the employee is demonstrating the refuse system outlined in the prep manual. I'll take this please and these. Not a problem. Can I see some ID please? Sure. I don't know. This looks a little tampered with. Do you have another form of ID? No, I don't. Well, then I'm afraid I can't sell this to you. Oh, come on, I'm 21. Sorry, the store could get in a lot of trouble if I sell to a minor. Do you still want the mints? No. See, the customer wasn't happy, but the clerk handled things professionally and didn't make the sale. There are no exceptions to this rule, even if some of your good but underage friends show up. Hi, John. Hey, you two. How's it going? Fine, just glad it's Friday. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know I can't sell that to you, right? You're underage. Oh, come on. Nobody's around. Plus, we're legal. <laughs> yeah, right. We're in the same biology class, remember? Come on, John. Be a pal. Sorry. I could lose my job. Some friend you are. Can I help the next customer in line, please? Well, what if an adult comes to the store and tries to make an alcohol or tobacco purchase for some kids outside? Tip-offs can be that a customer selects multiple brands during a single purchase, or if you have seen an underage kid approach the adult customer outside the store. What should you do? First, Ask the customer if the products are for someone under age. If he or she answers yes, explain that it's against the law for you to sell alcohol or tobacco products to minors, even if someone else is buying for them. Finally, explain that it's against the law for them to purchase and transfer the product to the minors and they could be fined, imprisoned, and or lose their own driver's license for a first offense. Then, as always, refuse the sale. Hey. 
Fine Alley's on number two. And I need a pack of Virginia Slims, uh, Super Slims, and a pack of Marlboro Ultra Lights. Excuse me, sir. Are you purchasing these for those kids outside? No, no, I'm not. Well, I was just wondering. You do know that it's a crime to purchase tobacco products, and alcohol for that matter, for minors. Just like I could get in trouble for selling to them, you could get in trouble for buying tobacco products for them. No, oh, man. I didn't realize it was that big a deal. Thanks for the warning. Now, what if a kid tells you the purchase is for her mom, and she even has a note saying so? Just remember the law and tell her that her mom must make the purchase herself. Even if mom did give her child a note, you'd still be making an illegal sale because you would be exchanging the product for the money with the minor, not the absent parent. Then, you guessed it, refuse the sale. These four scenarios contain several examples of the clerk using the refuse system. Let's review the steps of that system and see how the clerk used this technique. R. Recognize the need to check for a valid ID when alcohol is placed on the counter or tobacco is requested. Also, recognize the need to refuse the sale if the ID is not valid for the person making the purchase. I don't know. This looks a little tampered with. Do you have another form of ID? No, I don't. E. Eliminate the product Sorry. from the counter. I could lose my job. Some friend you are. Can I help the next customer in line, please? F. Be firm, yet polite. Politely inform the customer that you are unable to make the sale. Don't embarrass the customer or be rude. Do you still want the mints? No. U. Unite. Ask for help from other employees or your manager. Know your store's policy for dealing with this type of situation. S. Shift your attention to the next customer. Can I help the next customer in line, please? E. Enter the occurrence into the establishment's incident log. The clerk in the scenarios handle the situations professionally and use the refuse system. Remember, if an incident occurs, the final step would be to enter the information into the store's incident log. It is very important to properly document any situations that arise. Communities throughout America are suffering from the plague of methamphetamine production and use. And these communities, many of which are rural and suburban, are looking for effective and innovative ways to fight back against this illegal menace. MethWatch was the first national effort aimed at curbing the spread of methamphetamines, and it provides a critical step in reducing the availability of meth in our communities. MethWatch is a voluntary program that involves a variety of people at the community and state levels, although retail involvement is the cornerstone of this program. The following short video will provide retailers and interested partners with the information needed to implement and maintain a MethWatch program. There is a chance that someone might come up to the counter to buy alcohol or attempt to order a drink from the bar when they are already obviously intoxicated. It is against the law to sell beer, wine, or liquor to an intoxicated person or to allow a grossly intoxicated person on your premises. Let's take a look at this type of situation and see how the server handles it. Give me a rum and coke, light on the ice. A master ID, please. You don't need my ID. I'm old enough to drink. Just fix me a rum and coke. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't serve you that with alcohol without an ID, but uh, here's a coke. I don't want that. I want a rum and coke. Well, I can't serve you that without an ID. So, um, would you like to see a menu? Our special tonight is uh, wings and fries, only $5.99. Do you believe this guy? I'm not hungry. <laughs> I think the problem is you're hard of hearing. What I want is a drink. And I want to buy that pretty lady down there a drink. I, I just can't do that. I can't serve you that drink tonight, sir. Um, look, it seems as though you've had a few drinks already before you got in here, so we're going to call you a cab and make sure that you get home safely. Excuse me, sir. Would you come with me, please? Yeah. All right. Remember, in this situation, it is recommended that you do not serve the patron an alcoholic beverage. Instead, offer an alternative, such as food or a non-alcoholic beverage. 
Another good policy is to provide the customer with an arrangement that will keep the person from having to drive. It is important for establishments to make every effort to prevent intoxicated customers from harming themselves or others. Before we can begin to understand the technique of drink counting that is described in the prep manual, we must answer one important question. What is a drink? The current Dietary Guidelines for Americans, published by the U.S. Departments of Health and Human Services and Agriculture, define a drink as one 12-ounce bottle of beer or wine cooler, one 5-ounce glass of wine, or 1.5 ounces of 80-proof distilled spirits. Although these are standard drink sizes, it is important to note that many establishments serve drinks that are larger than the standard size. Therefore, when serving a customer a larger beverage, you are serving them more alcohol, and this should be remembered as you implement the drink counting technique outlined in your manual. There are also a few other things to keep in mind as you are serving alcoholic beverages to your customers. Many special drinks on your menu may have two or more liquors in one drink. Although you may only be serving your customer one glass, this glass contains more than one drink. The number of drinks in that one glass depends not only on the amount of alcohol contained in the drink, but also the proof of the liquor. The higher the proof, the higher the number of standard drinks in one glass. One and a half ounces of liquor can range anywhere from just a little more than one drink to almost three drinks, depending on the proof of the liquor. It is important to keep this information in mind when serving your customers. Now let's take a look at a technique for managing the consumption of alcoholic beverages by customers in your establishments. Hi, what can I get you folks? Uh, I have a Long Island iced tea. Okay. And a Jack and Coke. Corona, please. Okay, I'll be right back. I think it's time to do a soft intervention with this group. This is the last drink I should serve them this hour, especially for the one drinking Long Island iced tea. All right, guys. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And here are some menus. We've got some great happy hour specials if you guys are getting hungry. There you go. Thanks. Did y'all get a chance to look at those specials? Yeah, I'll have the cheeseburger. Okay. I'll have a chicken sandwich, please. I'll have a cheeseburger also. I am starving. Oh, and can we have another round, please? Sure. I'll Thank go you. put your food order in, and then I'll be right back to check on you in a minute. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. It's been a long week. Really? What have y'all been doing? Wow, that group's really drinking fast. Really? Yeah, the one guy is having a Long Island iced tea, too. I think I need to slow him down. All right, I'll keep eyeing it for you. Yeah. Oh, I need to get um, two Bud Lights for table five. All right, I got you. All right. Yeah, these are the good times. <laughs> the times we all try to uh, There you go. Oh, all right. You're welcome. Thank you, I'll be right back with some more water and your drink in just oh, a minute. Okay? I appreciate it. You're welcome. Can you let the other servers know that table three is now a yellow table? I'll do it. Thanks. The server handled this situation in a professional manner. She offered the customers food at the appropriate time. She also communicated the situation to the bartender, who will share it with the other servers. It is important for all members of the staff to know which tables may be red, yellow, or green tables. Remember that food and time are the only factors that you, 
as a server can control to slow down the process by which alcohol is absorbed into the bloodstream. The traffic light cut and refuse systems described in the prep manual can be effectively used to monitor your customer's alcohol consumption. Underage drinking is one of our state's most pressing health issues. According to the International Institute for Alcohol Awareness, a project of the Pacific Institute for Research and Evaluation, 186,000 young people drink in South Carolina each year at a cost to society of $899 million. Roughly one in four high school students binge drink and roughly one in four began drinking before the age of 13. In 2005, underage drinkers consumed more than 12% of all alcohol sold in South Carolina, totaling $228 million in sales. This is a very serious issue and you play an important role in preventing the sale of alcoholic beverages to underage patrons. Let's take a look at a few ways to properly handle underage patrons in your establishment. Hi, how are you this evening? I'm doing pretty good, how are you? Good. Do we have two Bud Lights, please? Sure, can I see your ID? Oh yeah, no problem. Is someone joining you this evening? Yes, he's in the bathroom right now. Oh, and could we have uh, menus while you're at it? Sure, I'll be right it. back with those beers and some menus. Here you go. Oh, thank you. We have several specials this evening, so just let me know if you have any questions about the menu. Sounds great. I appreciate it. Oh, man, you forgot my, my friend's drink. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I can't leave it with you. I have to check his ID as well. Oh, don't worry. He's legal. I'm sure he is, but I still have to check his ID before I serve him. Don't worry. I'll be back in a minute. Don't bother. The server handled this situation professionally. Just remember, it's your responsibility to check each patron's ID before serving alcoholic beverages to every single customer. Now let's take a look at a few techniques that your establishment can use to identify of age versus underage patrons. How are you this evening? How are you doing? I'm doing well. You should have seen the one I had to do at Cold Stone. It was ridiculous. And they were asking for like the tips or whatever. Oh, and you had to sing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, because they're like, when a customer gives you a tip, you sing. Well, don't we I appreciate it. Do you have an email? Oh, I'm sorry, we can't accept this. How you doing? Doing well. All right, thank you, sir. This is a great technique for establishments to use, but remember, the liability is ultimately on the server, even if IDs are checked at the door. Wristbands or some other type of visible identifiers that are not easily removed are great to use. But remember to always check IDs before serving patrons. Remember, as the server, it is ultimately your responsibility to ask for and properly check all customers' IDs before serving them alcoholic beverages. Even if your establishment has other practices in place, such as bouncers checking IDs at the door or using wristbands to identify patrons who are of legal age. Remember, underage drinking is a problem in our state, and you can do your part to keep alcohol out of the hands of our youth by taking the time to properly check the IDs of all patrons before serving alcoholic beverages. So check for yourself and uphold the law. The bottom line of PrEP is that you have the right to refuse to sell alcohol or tobacco to anyone, not just minors. Just remember, the underage use of alcohol and tobacco products is a serious problem that needs all of our attention. We know that the earlier an individual starts smoking tobacco or drinking alcohol, the greater are his chances of experiencing problems related to these substances later in life. Young people who begin drinking before age 15 are four times more likely to develop alcohol dependence and are two and a half times more likely to become abusers of alcohol than those who begin drinking at age 21. In 2004, almost 1,000 youth ages 12 to 20 were admitted for alcohol treatment in South Carolina, accounting for 7% of all treatment admissions for alcohol abuse in the state. Prevention is the key. And those of you who own, manage, and work in establishments where alcohol or tobacco products are sold play a major role in making sure that our laws are upheld. 
It's up to all of us to work together to reduce the illegal sale of alcohol and tobacco products to minors. Please help us keep alcohol and tobacco out of the hands of our children. Your job, your safety, and even your freedom depend on it.